The manifestation community is divided in a number of different topics, but there's one thing that I think we can all collectively agree on, and that is negative thoughts absolutely suck. And if we could remove them entirely, that would make life a whole lot easier. Well, I do think that there is actually a way that you could remove the vast majority of negative thoughts. In fact, I actually think there's a couple of different ways that you can get it to a point where they're very far and few between, but when they do come up, you can handle them effectively. And today, I want to give you my methods that I use to get myself to this point. Because there was a time in my life when I was riddled by negative thoughts as well, but with some practice utilizing these methods, I got where I am now, which is where they very rarely happen. And if they do, I know how to overcome them. So if that's something that you need, maybe those pesky negative thoughts have been getting the best of you lately, stick out to the end of this video because I can guarantee it's gonna help you on your journey. Hey everyone, my name is Matthew and I am a mindset and manifestation coach. I absolutely love that you're here because the intention behind this channel is to make manifestation and everything involving it as simple as possible. So if that's something that you're interested in, please drop me a subscribe and click the bell icon when you do. And if you could like and comment on this video to let me know you've liked it, that really helps me know what's worth making more of in the future. But thank you so much for all your lovely comments, anyone that comes to work with me, but now let's get into it. So like I said, there are two different ways that I like to make use of to remove the vast majority of negative thoughts in my life. There is a third that I may touch on in the end of this video, but I'm not sure about that one. And if I get onto it, I'll explain why. But the main one, the fundamental key, working on where those negative thoughts are even coming from in the first place. We are human, which means we will have the odd negative thought, even if it has zero association to what we assume to be the case for us. For example, even the richest person may have the odd thought of, what if I lost it all? Even the healthiest relationship will have the odd moment where there's almost a bicker, or maybe even a full-blown argument. The best of something is not immune to any kind of negativity. But the difference between being the best of something and then having that negativity arise, and being the worst of something, or really struggling with it and having that negativity arise, is the level of association that we have with that thing. A rich person having that thought of what if I lost it all would probably immediately laugh it off and go, I have so much money that wouldn't even be possible. The healthiest relationships, if they had an argument or a bicker, may have their moment, but afterwards they'd be all laughing about it. They can make jokes about it. They'd probably be playfully mocking each other for the way that they sounded in the argument because they know that it's just a blip and it's not going to ruin their relationship. But people on the opposite end of the spectrum let's say you're manifesting money and you have negative thoughts about money, you would probably panic a whole lot more. Oh shit, yeah, what if I don't make that money this month? What if I can't pay the bills? Oh my God, these thoughts are really true for me. Or if you're in a rocky relationship right now and you have thoughts about them leaving, instead of brushing it off knowing that they're not going, going anywhere, you would probably have moments where you sit there and think, oh God, what am I gonna do? This level of association is dictated by what we assume to be true for us. So if you want to negate the amount of negative thoughts that you even have coming up and furthermore, deal with them when they come up, the best thing that I could recommend for you is to understand where they're coming from and then address them at the core. Like, for example, the money, a rich mindset. Obviously, in that example, it is based on the fact that they have lots of money. But nonetheless, a rich mindset having a negative thought about money would brush it off because it's not their story. A poor mindset, having a negative thought about money, would heavily associate with it. So what we want to do is identify where these thoughts are coming from and the effects that they are having on us. So we can then address them at the core. If it is a feeling of lack due to not having enough money, start working on that element of yourself. Start claiming that money just seems to flow to you. Start claiming to yourself that you have enough money to feel safe and secure. Start doing things in the 3D if you wish to that would benefit your financial situation so you feel less concerned, i.e. maybe not spending so much at McDonald's next time you go or something like that. But essentially, you're finding the root cause of the association with these negative thoughts and you're addressing it at the foundation. If you're scared that your person's going to leave or that they're not going to come back, why is that the case? Why is that a thought that you heavily associate with as opposed to being able to brush it off like, 
we're the best thing ever, they're staying forever. Or I'm the best possible option, so of course they're going to come back. What is it that has you associating and going down that negative path when those thoughts come up? Work on that root cause. I'm more than good enough for them to stick around, so of course they're going to. Or I'm the best and most perfect option for them, so why would they give this up? Those kinds of things. If you can identify the root cause behind the concern, behind the association with that negative thought, you can start building up that story and replacing it with a new story, a new script that your subconscious mind will go off of. And what this will do upon consistency of uh, residing within this new script is it will a provide your subconscious subconscious mind a new story. If your subconscious mind has a new story, it pushes out new experiences and it pushes out new unconscious thoughts, which means your unconscious thoughts will naturally go towards a more desired story, therefore lessening the amount you even have to deal with. But furthering that even more, another bonus to it is because it's the new story, you won't associate with those negative thoughts when they do occasionally come up as much because it's no longer the story that you abide by. If you go from having a poor mindset all the way to having an abundant rich one, and then you have a negative thought about money, because of the growth that you've done through changing the script that you feed your subconscious mind, you will no longer abide with that old story. You will no longer fear those negative money thoughts. You'll be able to maybe even appreciate them because you'll be able to sit there and say, I remember when that would knock me on my ass, but now I'm better than that. I know that I've got more than enough money. I know that I can have money coming from anywhere. I know that I've got this relationship. I know that I'm their best option. So those thoughts, they don't bother me anymore. And that's the first way. Building that fundamental, deep-rooted, this is the new script, therefore making it so that what comes up is aligned to the new script. And when the opposite comes up, it doesn't concern you as much. I'll get back to the video in just a moment, but I just wanted to say that if you do need any one-to-one -one help from me, right now is the best time. As you're going to see up on the screen right now, tons of success stories, tons of amazing feedback from the coaching and the manifest manifestation assistance service. So if you've been thinking about it for a little while and you just want to get that help but umming and ahhing, these people took the leap and look where it got them. And if you're interested in that manifesting for you service, I just want to announce that as of now, if you join the gold membership, you get two days of it as a free bonus, which means if you've been wanting to try it out, but not wanting to commit to only that service, by becoming a gold member, you get it as well as exclusive content, 10 minute call with me, discounts on everything and a bunch of free stuff. And the great thing about it is it ticks over month by month, which means each month you'll get two days free assistance from me, as well as the 10 minute call and the, all the other stuff. There's really nothing there to lose, but absolutely everything to gain. So take it from those people, it is definitely worth it. But now let's get back to this video. The second way is how you actually handle those thoughts when they come up in the process of changing your inner self, but also when you have changed, just a way to help them. One thing to remember with manifestation, and I think this is something that many of us do forget, it's not what comes up, it's where you take it that truly matters. You're going to have the most random of stuff pop up through your mind due to a variation of different things. It could be a film that you've just watched that has you thinking about something negative. It could be a you just had a bad day at work. So all of a sudden your mind is just kicking up all the crap because, you know, when it rains, it pours all that kind of stuff. The mind has a lovely way of just throwing the most random shit at you. And fortunately, that doesn't really matter if it mattered what came up. I don't think anyone would really be able to manifest all that well, because in the process of changing those scripts, your subconscious mind is just throwing crap at you all the time. Doubts, fears, anxieties based on what the story it currently holds is. But the great thing about it is it's not what comes up. It's not what the subconscious mind provides you. It's where you take it. Of course, if it throws a negative thought at you and you associate and go, oh, yeah, that's absolutely true for me. What am I going to do? you're associating with it. You're claiming it as your truth in that moment. You're making it true for you, which of course is what keeps as many of us stuck. When those doubts, those fears, those anxieties, those thoughts come to mind, we do invest a little bit too heavily into them, which is why they keep playing out and perpetuating. 
But the thing to remember is your dominant state is what manifests. So if you can get into the habit when negative thoughts come up to uh, disassociate from them and create a new story that you're going to associate with in that moment, that is actually enough to overcome that thought in that moment. Of course, you may associate with that thought a little bit more and such things. You may need to try to reside in the new stuff a little bit longer. But let's just say for the argument of my explanation, every single thought is just a counter of one. The level of intensity and how long you dwell in it isn't necessary just for this explanation. But let's say you have a negative thought as a counter of one. If you can notice that negative thought and disassociate from it, i.e. not go down the story of it being true for you, but instead align your awareness to a new story where the opposition of that thought is true, there's a counter of one for that too. So you've had one negative thought, counter of one, di directed it to a positive thought, counter of one. Therefore, you've cancelled them out. Now, let's say, for example, you think about something else for a moment and then you go back to thinking about your desired, your desired state. That's a counter of one for the initial negative thought, a counter of one for the positive redirection, You've taken your moment's break and you've gone back into it and had another positive thought as a counter of two. That is dominant. If we can keep that kind of general pattern, noticing when a negative thought comes up, catching it, disassociating with it and directing our focus towards something positive, our negative story will never be able to come dominant. Coupling that with being proactive, like, for example, doing five to ten minutes of affirmations in the morning or when doing the washing up or falling asleep to them, your dominant story will never be able to go directed towards the negative because for every counter of one that you get on that negative thought, you've caught, you've disassociated and thought a new thought, which is a counter of one. And then let's just say for the argument that you've resided within that positive thought for longer and ensure that it has a more intense feeling and you're doing more affirmations or wh whatever way you like to go about dealing with them, as a count of one, two, three, four, five, but that negative thought is still stuck at one because you're not associated with it, you're not residing within it. By doing this, you are overcoming those negative thoughts. You may still have the odd one come up because of course you're changing your internal scripts, but if you could do this, if you could do that simple process that I just explained to you, your dominancy of your negative story will never ever go Sorry, your dominancy of your story will never ever manage to go or stay negative because you've outcounted it with a new, more intense feeling or a more quantity or consistency based feeling in already having that which you desire. Coupling that with changing the script, you're disassociating from that negative thought and you're changing the inner belief, the inner foundation of this situation to align with your new story which means when it happens, you'll have only positive thoughts regarding your desire and nothing less. But when you do get those odd occasional negative that we all will get due to just simply being human, you're not going to associate with it because of the foundational work that you've done, but you also have the method to actually physically deal with it in the moment that it comes up. If you can follow this foundational thing, if you can follow this little method, you will never ever lose your negative thoughts again. And I can assure you, it is definitely a great place to be. But there is one, no, there is a third thing that I wanted to mention. And I think I just wanted to mention it because I know that many people will probably comment it. I see this kind of stuff all the time. Affirm that you only have positive thoughts or affirm that your negative thoughts have no effect over you. Now, yes, you can do this. Now, the reason why I didn't really want to mention it as a solid point, and I'm just adding it in at the end, it's because I think that this kind of thing takes away from the foundation of actually doing the work yourself and actually being able to become solid and secure and safe within yourself. Yes, of course, it's all assumptions. You are still technically doing the work, but I think it takes you a lot further being able to actually overcome the thoughts and to actually work on the foundation of where those thoughts are coming from than to essentially slap a bandaid over it by saying you only have positive thoughts. Because if you do end up having negative thoughts, because you haven't learned how to deal with them properly, let's just say for whatever reason they come up, you haven't learned to deal with them properly, you're probably going to react, you're probably going to spiral, and that's just going to kickstart the whole process all over again. So yeah, definitely add in, I only have positive thoughts, or my negative thoughts don't manifest and stuff like that if you want to, but please don't ignore 
the foundational work to becoming a master manifester and really working on yourself to be able to create whatever you want. Because if you do slap a bandaid off it, they fall off real easy. And you'll find that something may happen in the 3D or you'll watch a film that gets you thinking something or maybe they get they leave you on red because they're busy. But because you've not done the foundational work, you're going to jump to that. and be like, Oh my God, why have they left me on red? Ah, that film has shown me this negative thing and spiraling down. So please take on the first two as absolute necessities and take on that third one if you feel like it would just benefit you a little bit more. But thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you lovely people in the next one. And I really hope you've enjoyed. Bye-bye.